Good evening. Welcome to the prayer meeting service for Valley Forge Christian Church on this first Wednesday of September, Wednesday, September the 2nd. I'm glad you're joining us here online, and we'll go ahead and get started. And I'd like to share with you, first of all, those who've had birthdays or having birthdays this week. This past Sunday, on August the 30th, was Lois Wisnett and Joe Phillips, and then this coming Saturday, September 5th, are Lori Shields and Johnny Holsclaw. So we want to wish a happy birthday to each and every one of these folks. Let's go now through our prayer list tonight. I have some additions from Sunday as well as a few updates for our list tonight. We had an unspoken request. We have also were asked to pray for the family of Christine Bartz, Margaret Grindstaff, and the family of John Matheson. And then on our uh, regular prayer list tonight, let's continue to remember these folks. We have Alex Spangler, Frank Murray, Gerald Livingston, Wes Forbes, Liz Tucker, Doug Fair, Gerald Holly, James Willie Holsclaw, Pam Pippen, Cassidy Sexton, Marley Snyder, Rusty Cable, and I want to go ahead and share with you a, an update from Rusty, a message that she sent me just a short while ago. She says that she's healing well from her surgery on her neck last week, and she has to complete six weeks of physical therapy. She's also struggling right now with her diabetes. Uh, she needs to get that under control so that they can uh, keep her on track for her transplant, uh, her liver transplant. She's been having some issues with that, uh, particularly keeping her sugar under control and is asking specifically that we pray about that issue with her diabetes. She also mentions that she has several appointments coming up in the next week. So again, pray for her as she goes through all of those appointments. All right, others who are on our list are Don Sexton and Teresa McKinney, Parker White, Harvey Howell, Pat and Linda Lewis, Thurman Price, Lois Ward, who is now back at Hillview again, uh, Willie Holsclaw, Chardonnay Roberts, Joe and Diane Sexton, Jean Lewis, Teresa Lawson, and Billy Shepard. Also, please remember Ethel Snyder. Ethel has been uh, going through a, a couple of health concerns right now, and I know she would appreciate your prayers for her. Let's remember those that we have in our area nursing homes, Eileen Clausen and Alta Harper at Ivy Hall, Mary Ruth McKinney, who is in the rehab area of Hillview, and as of right now, should be coming home in the next uh, week or so. I know she's anxious to get back home, and of course it will be a, an adjustment, but uh, please continue to pray for her as she looks forward to coming back home soon. At Sycamore Springs, we have Phyllis Edens and Billy June Hilton. Those who are homebound include Louise Guy and Joyce Ellis and Willie Douglas. If you have any names to add to our prayer list or if you have any updates for the list, please be sure to call the church office. Let us know so we can uh, take care of that and add to the prayer list. I would also remind you to pray for Thomas Jenkins. He's still out west working with the firefighting efforts out there. And uh, as you may know, there are still many places in California, Colorado, uh, Montana, where they're dealing with wildfires. So please keep him in your prayers. Let's, of course, continue to pray for our school systems as they are going through this time of adjustment. 
Let's pray for all of our healthcare workers, our government leaders, and military personnel. Please remember to pray for our church leaders here at Valley Forge. Uh, our monthly board meeting will be taking place this coming Sunday, so say a special prayer for the elders and deacons as they meet this coming Sunday afternoon to continue to guide and lead the church here at Valley Forge Christian. Let's remember to pray for, for one another. Let's pray for our sister churches. Let's remember our mission of the month, which is the Carter County Christian Women's Fellowship. Let's now go to the Lord in prayer. God in heaven, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the sunshine. We thank you for the opportunities we have had this day to be witnesses of your goodness and your grace. Thank you, Father, for watching over us. Thank you for providing for us. Thank you most of all that we have salvation through Jesus Christ. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would help us as we walk through life's journey each day, that we would stay close to the path that you have laid out before us in your word, that we would strive to follow the example of Jesus always. And Father, help us to reach out to one another as part of the church family, to help one another, to share one another's joys and sorrows. And also, Heavenly Father, to reach out to those around us that we encounter, that we deal with on a daily basis or even just once in a while, whatever it might be, to let those around us know that your Son, Jesus Christ, is the light of our lives. Father, we lift up these ones that we've named before you tonight. So many, Father, in our church, in our community, family members who are going through difficulties and trials on top of everything else that's happening in our world right now. So we pray a special measure of comfort and blessing, and if it's your will, healing to be upon them. We ask a special blessing, Father, on our sister Rusty Cable. We ask you, Lord, that you continue to heal her from her recent surgery. We pray that you help her with her efforts to get her sugar under control and we ask you, Father, to be with her as she goes through her appointments next week. We pray for our sister Ethel Snyder, Father, that you would give her comfort and help her, Father, as she's dealing with some health problems at this time. Lord, we pray for all of those in our, our community who are working to protect us and to help us as we deal with this pandemic, we pray your blessings upon the nurses and doctors, those who work in our nursing homes and clinics, all who are involved with health care and emergency services. Thank you, Father, for each and every one of them. And I pray that you would protect and, and strengthen them in the great work that you've called them to do. Lord, we also continue to pray for our schools for the elementary and junior high and high schools, the colleges and universities in our area. Please be with all of those who are a part of these efforts that, again, they might be protected and that they might also be able to accomplish the work that they've set themselves to do. We know that this is a, a time of, of struggle and adjustment for everyone. So, again, we pray, Father, that that all might have a spirit of patience and understanding with one another. Father, we pray your blessing, your continued blessing upon our church family here in this place. And even during this time when we are apart from one another, help us to strengthen the ties that bind us together by looking to your son, Jesus Christ, and using the means that we have to communicate with one another and to reach out to one another and to assure one another of our love and care for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Father, we pray that you would help us to lift up Jesus in all that we say and do. May your spirit fill us with your love and your grace 
as we live each and every day for your glory and for your honor. For it's in your son's name that we pray. Amen. We're in Psalm 28 tonight, and this is a psalm where we find a a petition being offered to God and the answer, or the, 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 the petition being answered. Now, we don't know exactly what God did in response to the petition, but this is a, a great psalm to read when you have experienced an answer to prayer. And that does happen. You know, when we pray, we go to the Lord and we present before Him our petitions and our concerns, and we pray that He will answer in accordance with His will. We pray oftentimes that He will deliver us, that He will provide help for us or healing. In some way or fashion or form, we we ask God to provide help for us, oftentimes uh, in circumstances of, of great difficulty or struggle. So many of the Psalms point to that kind of situation. And in this instance, David has offered up a petition, and then he offers praise to God for the answer to that petition. But we're going to start out, first of all, with the actual petition itself, verses 1 and 2. So let's read those to begin with. To you I will cry, O Lord, my rock. Do not be silent to me, lest, if you are silent to me, I become like those who go down to the pit. Hear the voice of my supplications when I cry to you, when I lift up my hands toward your holy sanctuary. David is showing us, just like he has in so many of his psalms, that God should be the one we turn to, not as our last resort, but as our first resort. God should always be the one that we turn to in our times of trouble. We should come to him as our rock the one who is solid and stable. We look through the scriptures and we see many times where the idea of a rock is used to point to God's faithfulness and also the reliability that we can have on God. We think of the teaching of Jesus as he closed out the Sermon on the Mount when he talked about the wise man and the foolish man building their houses. And of course, the wise man is the one who builds his house on the rock of Jesus' words. So God is a rock. He is one who is unmoving, unshakable, one who will not shift away from us, but he is one who will always sustain us and uphold us. David cries out to him, And if we've learned anything from our study through the Psalms so far, it is that we as believers, we are encouraged to cry out to God. We are his children, and it is sometimes entirely appropriate, indeed necessary, when we're facing deep and vexing problems to cry out to God from the depths of our souls. So David asks God to hear him. Don't be silent. He says, please don't don't give me the silent treatment or I will be like those who go down to the pit. That is to Sheol, the place of the dead. And there they no longer, the, the dead, according to David, then no longer are, are able to cry out to God. So, so please, God, listen to my petition. And notice, too, that he is crying out with his hands lifted up toward the sanctuary, that is, toward uh, the place of worship. So that doesn't necessarily mean that when you cry out to God that you have to figure out which direction Valley Forge Christian Church building is or anything like that. But once again, it shows how a a special place can be an, an avenue for us to come closer to God. But again, that doesn't mean we have to be in this building, in this place, for God to hear our prayers. But it's entirely appropriate for us to come to this place 
with our prayers. T- tonight, of course, we're, we're gathered in our homes and we are, figuratively speaking, lifting up our hands to God and sharing with Him our petitions. So he goes on in the next few verses to kind of expand on this idea of, of don't, don't uh, include me with, with those who don't deserve a hearing because they have turned away from you, O God. So he's going to go into some detail on that starting here in verse 3. Do not take me away with the wicked and with the workers of iniquity who speak peace to their neighbors, but evil is in their hearts. Give them according to their deeds and according to the wickedness of their endeavors. Give them according to the work of their hands. Render to them what they deserve. Because they do not regard the works of the Lord, nor the operation of his hands. He shall destroy them and not build them up. So David doesn't tell us exactly what his problem is here. But once again, we can kind of guess that probably he's dealing with some of his enemies. Whether it's within his own royal household or whether this is from an earlier time in his life when he's facing uh, Saul and, uh, and Saul's minions as they seek to take his life. But in any case, David's situation, whatever it might be, can be compared to various types of problems that we deal with in our lives when we feel that we are being almost suffocated by the, the problems that we're facing. And David is saying, don't... Don't let me share the lot of those who practice wickedness. Because after all, they face God's judgment and his wrath. They will not be ones who, who hear, uh, for, to whom God grants a hearing. So he reminds us here of who these kind of people are and, and what their uh, outlook or what their attitude is. For one thing... They say one thing, but mean another. That is, they speak peace to their neighbors, but evil is in their hearts. So, those who are deceptive, those who are hypocritical even, those who harbor bad intentions toward others. David says, please don't include me among them. Instead, he calls upon God to carry out justice against them. So we kind of get a sense that maybe this is what the the particular issue that David is dealing with here. And if so, then once again, we can say, all right, I've been there, done that, know what it's like to be the the target of false accusations or or people showing a a, a kind face to me, but then turning around and and, uh, stabbing me in the back. So (laughs) we know what David might be experiencing here. And he's calling upon God to deal out justice to those who uh, follow such a way. He says, give them according to the work of their hands, hands that are, are swift to do evil, render to them what they deserve. But what's the problem here? What, what's the fundamental problem with these folks? It's the fact that they do not center their lives around God and around God's desires for how they should live. And that's that's a contrast to David because, uh, or to us as we pray this psalm, because what we're saying to God is, I'm crying out to you, O God, because I know that my life is in your hands and, and I seek to follow you, I seek to live my life centered around you, centered around Jesus Christ. On the other hand, we find that there are many in the world that that's, that's, not their, that's not their concern at all. They want to live life on their own terms. And if that means treating their neighbor or their fellow man badly, showing a, a happy face to them but turning around and doing something evil to them, well, that's fine because to them... That's what life is all about. They have no regard for, for what God, uh, what kind of standards God wants them to follow. And so their hands, again, are, are swift to do evil things. They have no regard for the works of the Lord, nor the operation of His hands. So notice the contrast going on here. You've got self-centered people 
who use and manipulate and sometimes even destroy the lives of others. And figuratively speaking, that's, they're doing this with their hands, but, but, but really with, with their entire lives. And they have no regard for the work of God's hands. That is the work that God is doing in this world to reconcile people and to show them the right way to live. And so the result of this, David says, is very clear. God will literally tear them down. Now, my translation says in verse 5, he shall destroy them. Uh, But the word can be translated, he shall tear them down and not build them up. So this sort of takes us back to Jesus' teaching again, where he talks about the wise and the foolish man. The foolish man is the one who, who builds his house on the sand. And it may be a big, elaborate structure. It may be quite impressive. But just like those beautiful homes that we sometimes see pictures of on the ocean front when a hurricane comes through, or houses built on the, on the hillside along the, the Pacific coast in California when there's a mudslide, when they are in that precarious position and the storms come and the winds and the waters rage, down they go. And so what David is saying is they've more or less set themselves up for their own undoing. And so this is the outworking of God's justice. And he's praying that that God will carry out justice in this world. We know that sooner or later, those who live their lives without regard for God, they will face that reckoning, either in this world or in the world to come, I should say. And uh, if, if they escape it in this world, they certainly will in the next. So, David is saying essentially, don't, don't treat me as, as those who have no regard for you, O Lord, because I, I realize my life is in your hands, and I, I turn to you because I know that you're the one who can help me. So, he's offered his petition, And lo and behold, starting in verse 6, he has words of praise. Blessed be the Lord, because he has heard the voice of my supplications. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him, and I am helped. Therefore, my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song, I will praise him. So David has had his petition answered, and he wants everybody to know that God is the one who has done this. And that's really something quite significant there. How many times in our lives do we, we offer up a prayer to God? Oh, Lord, please, please help me with this problem. I'll, I'll do anything. Please, please help me. Help make this right. And maybe God answers that prayer just exactly as we asked him to. He does exactly what we want, and the problem is resolved, things go back to being happy and, and good in our lives, and we just kind of go on our merry way. It's like, oh, well, that turned out nicely, and maybe even sort of pat ourselves on the back and say, I, I handled that. I handled that all right, and yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be sure and, and uh, check with God next time whenever something bad happens, but I'll just go back to living my life on my own terms. Well, <laughs> hopefully that's not something we do, but it's, it's a temptation for Christians. It certainly is. Uh, once we've been through the storm and things have settled down and they're back to normal and things are maybe even better than they were before, then, well, maybe sometimes we kind of push God aside and sort of forget about him. Well, David is reminding us here that we need to glorify God. We need to offer him our praise. And we need to do it publicly. We need to let people know. And so when we are together, when that's possible, um, it's not such a bad idea to to say, I want to share with my brothers and sisters the, the good thing that God has done in my life, how he answered my prayers, how he how he delivered me from this problem. And I want to give him the credit. I want to give him the honor and the glory. So, again, I I think David's teaching us something very important here. That we should not take the credit for ourselves. 
but always give it to where it is due, to the one who hears our supplication. The Lord is my strength and my shield. He is the one who sustains me. He's the one who protects me. So again, I'm, I'm not doing this all by myself. I'm not standing up here like Frank Sinatra and singing, I did it my way. But God is the one who helped me. So finally, in our last uh, two verses, now David is kind of bringing everyone in on this and closing with a, a final kind of petition to God once more. The Lord is the, their strength, and this could also be translated the strength of his people. And he is the saving refuge of his anointed. Now, that's a, that's a specific reference to the, the king, the anointed one, the, the one who's been chosen to, to be the king. So he's, he's including himself. He's including all of the people. He's saying, we need to acknowledge that God is the one who answers our prayers and delivers us. So once again, in verse 9, we're going to, to turn this back to God as a petition. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Shepherd them also and bear them up forever. So now we've gone from David, the individual, offering up his petition and then giving thanks to God for answering it. And now he's, he's standing with the people and saying once more, we, we confess that we need your salvation. We depend on you, O oh God. We trust in you to be our shepherd, to be the one who always leads us faithfully and carries us in your arms. And that is such a, a beautiful image there in that the closing phrases of verse 9. And it harkens back to, of course, Psalm 23, the shepherd psalm. Bless your people, uh, save your people and bless your inheritance. Shepherd them also and bear them up forever. Well, I want to close our psalm tonight with the paraphrase that we have from Psalm 28. And I think this is a particularly good paraphrase tonight. It really brings out uh, the, the deep meanings of this psalm. Oh God, I am crying for help. This is not a pious ex exclamation. I mean it. I'm desperate. If you don't listen, I'll go down the drain. Don't let me float downstream with those who ignore you. I know they shall go over the edge if they persist in their course of rebelliousness and indifference. Reach forth, O God, and snatch me out of this overpowering current, lest I perish with them. I thank you, O God. You have heard my agonizing cry. I called for you, and you responded. You are my hope and my salvation. I will sing your praises forever. And thus the Lord is the hope and salvation of all who trust in him. Stay close to those who struggle, O God. Never let them go. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, you are our shepherd, and your son Jesus Christ is the shepherd who laid down his life for the sheep. We thank you that you hold us close, that you help us in our struggles. May we always turn to you. May we not strive to live lives on our own terms as we see so many people doing and on a road to self-destruction. Help us instead, Father, to center our lives around you, to turn to you always for guidance and strength, and also, Father, to lift up Jesus Christ so those who are on that self-destructive path can have the opportunity to turn to him before it's too late. Because, Father, we know you don't want anyone to go to everlasting judgment. We pray, Father, that you would help us to reach out to those around us who need to hear about Jesus Christ and to know of his saving power. But, Father, again, we want to thank you for the many times you have answered our prayers. And please forgive us for those times when you've answered our prayers and then we've been neglectful in offering you praise and thanksgiving and, and giving you the credit that you deserve. Help us to be more forthright about that, Father. And when we sing your praises, Lord, may our hearts be filled with gratitude and thanksgiving for those many times when you have answered prayers 
both spoken and unspoken, when you have provided for us in ways many times that we haven't even understood or realized. Father, to you we cry out, for you are our rock, you are our strength, you are our shield. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you for joining us on this midweek hour. And I'll remind you that we do have this coming Sunday morning at 10 o'clock our in-person and online services. So please do join us for that. Uh, we are, if you come in person, part of that on Sunday morning at 10 o'clock or to join us online, we'll be live streaming then as well and we'll have the adult Sunday school lesson right after the Sunday morning service. Please call us here at the church office if, if there's anything you need, communion supplies or if you have prayer concerns or any other way that we can minister to you. And again, please pray for our church leaders as they'll be having uh, the monthly board meeting this coming Sunday afternoon. Please pray for them in the decisions uh, that they need to make. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. May he be with you through the remaining days of this week. And we pray that soon we'll be together again. Go in peace. May the Lord be with you. Good night.